Everyone knows that sharks have a mean bite, but just how strong is it? It's a controversial subject. The Mythbusters have a plan to find out once and for all. I'm cutting up pieces of fire hose to make our shark bite pressure rig for the Bahamas. And I'm cutting it into four foot lengths. Later I'll be tapping it with end plugs and attaching a gauge to it. Once it's finished, Adam fills it with water, and hey presto, the bite force meter is ready for a test drive. There you go. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> All right, let's pull down the floor and stand on it. Okay. Go ahead and stand on it. The weight of the boys on the hose displaces the water and gives a force reading. Replace their feet with a shark's jaw, and you've got a bite force rig. That works great. It's ready for chopping. So it's off to the Bahamas, where Adam picks the brain of shark expert, Dr. Samuel Gruber. Doc, Jamie and I are wondering if you can help us telling us what you know about sharks' bite force. Yeah, shark bite forces have been measured before. There's some scientific literature, lots of variability. The number you get pretty much depends on the apparatus you use. Are there variations between different species in terms of their bite pressures? Yes, there is, because there are different feeding mechanisms. For example, a shark like the great white shark doesn't need that much of a bite force to cut up its prey, whereas the lowly nurse shark, which crushes hard-shelled objects, does need a lot of bite force. They have tiny teeth. Wow, and people like totally aren't afraid of nurse sharks, and they're terrified of whites. Well, there's another myth we're going to bust. As the doc pointed out, there are lots of variables, but Adam and Jamie's special device should take the guesswork out of the equation. This unappetizing arrangement is actually meant to get bitten by a shark and hopefully feel like a little food so it puts a little muscle into it. For maximum muscle, Jamie makes the rig more appealing to the sharks. So if you put as much gooey fish stuff on this as we can possibly put on there, we're going to cover it with a bag so it's concealed so we don't get eaten up in the process of putting it in place. And once we're down there, we'll pull the bag off. Hopefully, we'll get a bite. That's the plan. So the boys head into the safety of the shark cage. Come on in, partner. And settle in to watch the sharks take a bite out of their face. Uh-oh, we've got a little limbo. Looking for some bait. He's very intent on getting some food. They really are giving this rig the hairy eyeball from way up close. It's clear they don't know what to make of it. After 15 minutes of the hairy eyeball, the sharks still haven't bitten the rig. And the Mythbusters' dreams of ending the controversy are biting the dust. Okay, one shark just tried to swim under the rig. It was 11. And as it can, knocked it off its mooring. Uh, Jamie, I don't know how much more enticing we can make this bite rig. They keep on sniffing. Well, it's kind of like fishing. I think you just have to be patient. No one told Adam, but patience is a virtue. So the rig is reset, and then eventually... Well, there we go. That was a beautiful job. Did we get anything on the meter? Over? No, there's nothing on the meter. You managed to get the bait without having to bite the rig. Over. So after 30 minutes waiting for a bite, they finally got one. But it didn't trip the meter. I think we're going to have to abort this one. I'm almost out of air. Yeah, me too. See you up there. Man, I am totally disappointed. Our bite rig is a good rig. I wanted to be bitten by a shark. What are you going to do? It's nature. Mm -hmm.